Should Utah be considered the best team in the Pac-12, and how will they fare in their 2023 Pac-12 schedule? We're talking about it on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including podcasts and wherever you get your podcasts in general, and of course, YouTube as well. Um, like and subscribe if this is your first time tuning into our show. And my name is JT Wistersill, host of Locked On Utes, and Spencer McLaughlin of Locked On Pac 12 joining me now. And uh, Spencer, it's really exciting right now because we are just a week away from Pac 12 play really getting underway. We did have one Pac 12 game last week. Sorry, Stanford, that didn't go so well, but that was kind of what we expected overall. But um, it's really exciting that we're rolling into Pac 12 play. And, uh, you know, Utah's 2 0 coming off wins against the Baylor and Florida team that are having their struggles right now, but still two Power Five wins against two overall considered solid Power Five programs. I know Baylor's kick quickly nose diving right now, but either way, um, Utah's going to be 3 0 heading into Pac 12 play after they beat Weaver State this Saturday. And as for where they should be ranked, currently, according to the AP poll, they should, they're right now the third ranked team in the Pac-12, USC and Washington are higher. And honestly, as much as I would love to say, like, is Utah the best team in the Pac-12, as much as I'd love to say yes, I think until Cam Rising and Brant Keithy get back, I personally wouldn't say that quite yet, because I've seen Caleb Williams and Michael Penix right now with the level they're operating at. I just think until we get Cam back, that's, an, and then we need to, we're going to get to see them play match up as well. I totally understand and get why people have USC and Washington against them. Depending on how Cam looks when he gets back, I think you can make an argument eventually for Utah being the top team. But right now, I do think it's fair to have Utah third. I would have Utah third, and I wouldn't be mad if someone had him fourth even, because look, it's tough to win on the road in college football. And Bonix and Oregon were still able to do that against Texas Tech too, so I give them credit. But um, yeah, I said, I feel like Utah should be the third favorite right now in the Pac-12. Well, I mean, just in a direct comparison to Oregon, what's more impressive, beating an 0-2 Baylor team on the road with your backup quarterback or beating an 0-2 Texas Tech team uh, on the road with your starting quarterback? I I, I think that case is pretty clear. It would be the Utes uh, look better, at least defensively so far. No surprise there. And that's kind of Oregon's big question at the moment. You you can make a case for really any team to be the best in the Pac at at the moment, um, except probably Oregon State or UCLA uh, just because they haven't played a Power 5 opponent at this point in time. But if you wanted to make the case for Colorado, I I don't think that that dog would hunt either. Uh, If you wanted to make the case for Washington State, I don't think you could really make it. However, they're in the top 25, and Washington State looked very good. Um, That defense is nasty. Uh, Jackson and Stone coming off the edge. Those are dangerous football players. And Jake Dickert, as I have long said, is a very good football coach. And I I think that he has done a fantastic job. Happy to see the Beavs and the Cougs having the the success that they have earned, hiring the right coaches and building their programs over the last several years. I think I need to see them, you know, really play each other to know which one is is better because they will both be uh, each other's first, uh, or no, sorry, Washington State just played Wisconsin. Oregon State's first Power 5 game is against Washington State on the road week one so like this week in college football including in the Pac-12 it's kind of a dud like it is not is why scheduling is so ridiculously broken uh it is the one thing that is the biggest issue in the sport in in my particular view this week is a great example of that that you've had a bunch of great non-conference games but they weren't spread out very well and then some teams you know dodge non-conference games like if Michigan weren't a bunch of cowards they'd be playing UCLA this week guess what they're not because they bailed out on them, and there aren't other matchups because schools have too much power in these situations, and we'll talk about that a bit later. But I think among the, among the top four, uh, like again, I thought there were five contenders in the league coming into this year. I, I still feel that way, even though other teams have had early season success. UCLA and Washington State are in the top 25, so we have eight Pac-12 teams ranked, which is nuts. Colorado, of course, as well. I still think your top four contenders uh, at the moment in no order are USC, Utah, Washington, and Oregon. Mm -hmm. I think you can make a case for any of them. Uh, Oregon probably has the weakest case right now, but they've also played one of the tougher games. Like USC has had a couple of really easy games. Washington has had a couple of relatively easy games. Boise State is a solid opponent, and they they, they looked impressive. Uh, The Huskies did for sure. But again, Washington hasn't played a Power 5 team. USC... 
Hasn't played a Power 5 team. I mean, they played Stanford, so statement stands. Uh, I'm sorry, Cardinal. Like, they don't deserve that, but at the moment, that's just kind of where, where, where things are. Um, I think the line was smaller against San Jose State than it was against... No, it was uh, 31 and a half against San Jose State. It was 29 and a half against Stanford. So that tells you what you need to know about the Cardinal at, at, at this point in time. So they haven't played anybody yet. Washington has kind of but not really played anybody yet. Um, Oregon and Utah went on the road to play Power 5 teams. Colorado has played a couple of Power 5 teams. You can make a case for anybody right now. It's still early, and, and we'll get a better idea once conference play begins because everybody basically has a cupcake game this week except for Washington and Arizona State who we all know is not one of the better teams in the pack in fact one of the worst ones maybe the worst one uh either them or Stanford I think are the contenders at the moment so uh, I I think we need a little bit more time uh Utah with Cam Rising and Brant Keithy of course they can be I mean Colorado won two power five games one at home one on the road just like Utah did deserve full props for that Colorado did it with their starting quarterback Utah has done it with their backup quarterback and Colorado could have lost to TCU, and they were not going to lose to Nebraska. Apparently, I was wrong about that game. Um, but y- y- Utah was dominant against Florida with Bryson Barnes. Like, I mean, defense travels, defense holds up. They're a really good football team. So with Cam Rising there, they could be the best team on any given day. So could USC, so could Oregon, so could Oregon State, and so could Washington. And maybe even Colorado, if they can continue what they got going on right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, we'll I think Colorado is obviously much better than most of us expected, for mm-hmm. sure. I, I don't know if they have conference contender in them. Um, Nebraska looks pretty bad. And, you know, they did win by 22 points. It was not a no. wildly impressive display in, in the first half. Uh, Nebraska hung around for a long time in that game. And full props to Colorado for winning. But they, I wouldn't say they were dominant in that game, the way the final score kind of indicated. Yeah, two weeks till we get Colorado taking on Oregon too, so that'll be kind of a good early indication. Yeah, that'll be a good test. How much of a contender they are overall, and yeah, as I, you as we both discussed now, you just have to be so impressed with this Utah team. It's hard to win on the road in college football. It's one of the reasons I was originally going into this year so high on Bryson Barnes is because he was able to do that with such a quick turnaround against Washington State, finding out ten minutes before the game that he would be the starter. But then you saw against Baylor just why he is a backup quarterback and. If it wasn't for Utah's defense, Nate Johnson wouldn't have even been in the position to help them win that game late. And, of course, Baylor had a backup quarterback in the game, too. But give this Utah defense credit, as we mentioned. I feel like they're the best defense in the Pac-12 currently right now with the level they've played at. They're getting Absolutely. And, they're, and with starters out, too. Samote Peppa is still not back yet. He was their top interior pass rusher a year ago. Junior Tafuna was, was really rusty in the first half against Baylor. And then in the second half, looked like his dominant self. The safety tandem is elite. So this Utah team is loaded with talent right now. And look, the Pac-12 is loaded with talent too. So it's going to make it a tough schedule for them to get through. And that's what's going to be fun about this schedule is we're about to go game by game. We did it before the season, and we're about to dive into it again in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps you rider what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from supercharges, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your partner is guaranteed to fit your ride every time you're the part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the price you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or dive alive at ebay.com slash motors ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions do apply also want to talk to you guys about our great friends at uccu With UCCU, they have a really exciting thing going on. It's learn and earn. And with the UCCU mobile banking app, that pays your entire family to learn about money. Kids look to parents to become more financially literate. Parents don't always know the answers. Learn and earn breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. Every time a family member completes a topic, they earn points that occur and can be redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of the family who can compete against each other and track their progress on leaderboards. Learn and Earn is inside the UCCU mobile banking app, so play it anytime, anywhere. The more you play, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and Earn, part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking Program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. UCCU, 
love where you bank. Spencer, coming back into this one, we were just talking about how good the Pac-12 is. Eight teams ranked in the top 25. You and I both on record before the season started said the Pac-12 would not have a playoff team in it. Yes, you got, yeah, got to love what, what the, the level the Pac-12 is playing at right now. It's been a – Yeah, it's been the a league's going to die after this year and the best it's ever been. Woohoo! Good job, guys. Really good. Really good stuff. It's it's one heck of Idiots. a last. Okay, game. sorry. I know it's so, it's so sad, but it is it's setting up one heck of a last dance. And uh, we were both on record saying the Pac-12 would not have a college football playoff team this year if by somehow Correct. all these teams that are currently undefeated were able to only suffer one loss and be a conference champion, they would absolutely get in. Or even if they were able to have a regular season, mm-hmm. a perfect regular season, then losing the conference championship game, they could get in the same way TCU got in last year because they could use some help. And with the how shaky Ohio State. And Al- Alabama's already lost, of course. And just, just some of these other teams have looked out of the gate. I think there's definitely an opportunity there for the pack. But there, and, and there's definitely one for Utah, right? So we're going to go game by game and talk about Utah's schedule. And we both predicted Utah to have two losses in conference also before the season. And what's funny is we each predicted it to be two games. So I'm curious if those losses still hold up the same, those predictions we had, now that we've seen this, all the teams play a couple times this season. So Utah's first game against yeah. the pack opponent is going to be Saturday, September 23rd. UCLA, the 24th ranked team, comes to town. This is all, it's all, it's been very tough to predict Cam Rising's health at this point when he's coming back. Coach Winningham, the last he spoke, said he's still practice, a full participant in practice, just waiting on clearance from the doctors. That game is still two weeks away. I believe that is the first time we're going to see Cam Rising. But I'll also say, even though I think UCLA is a good team, I think Utah can win this game with Nate Johnson because of the level their defense is playing at right now. So regardless of who starts for Utah at quarterback against UCLA, I expect Utah to get a win because they've been very good against the Bruins when the Bruins come to Salt Lake. Yeah, and uh, UCLA has settled on what I think is the right decision. Uh, It's a long-term play, but it's the right one for the Bruins. That's starting Dante Moore, the true freshman. And and look, he is uh, immensely talented. He can do some really, really good things on the football field. He's still a true freshman, and that's going to be his first real road test. Um, You know, he played against San Diego State. They had a good crowd, but that's not a great football team in in, in 2023. One-time future Pac-12 member, but RIP. So... I think when you look at what Utah's defense brings to the table and what they are, are going to be going up against, yeah, I feel pretty confident in them winning that football game. I, I had the Utes at 10-2 and two before the season began. I had uh, them losing at USC because I, I thought last year, hey, if that game was played in Los Angeles, that is a game that USC wins. This year the game is lost in Los Angeles. I think Utah and USC, look, can they win the game? Of course. Yeah, of course. I, I could see it happening. I think that one goes USC's way. Uh, I lean towards the home team when two teams are so evenly matched, unless I, you know, have something I like about one team in particular. And my other preseason prediction was one of my big upsets of the year. I think you guys are losing to Arizona in the second to last week of the regular season. I don't know if you saw what Arizona did over the weekend, but they went to a borderline top 25 team in Mississippi State on the road, and they took them into overtime. And they had an opportunity to go down and win the game and Jaden Delora threw four interceptions. They had five turnovers on the day, and they were able to do that. So I, I think that is a vastly improved football team. I think Arizona is going to beat both Utah and Oregon State. That was in my preseason predictions for this year. I haven't wavered off of that. And it's not because I don't think Utah and Oregon State are really good. I think it's that those two games are being played in Tucson, where they have a rabid fan base who are excited about the program right now, as they should be because Arizona is on an upward trajectory under Jed Fish and company as they get set to go to the Big 12 next year. I think their defense is vastly improved. I mean, to go on the road and allow 31 points in overtime to an SEC school, that's not something the Arizona defense was able to do last year. They didn't have that in the bag. You know what they had in the bag? They allowed 49 points to Jack Plummer-led Cal in Berkeley last year. That's what that's what the Arizona defense had in store they are improved, and they were already a really good and productive offense. So uh, I, I have not wavered off of any of my game predictions at this point in time. Okay. Um, I don't know what Cam Rising's health is going to be. That was my big question for Utah coming into the year is how healthy is he going to be? And right now, JT, what I want to ask you is, hey, if I, if I told you you had to place a percentage of confidence, give me a confidence interval on Cam Rising playing all nine Pac-12 games this year, are you even over 50% on that? I'm not. <laughs> as much as I think I wouldn't be either. As much as I think he's going to come back against UCLA, just how long this has taken and you're always just one hit away in general. Right. He's, even last year he missed a he missed a Washington State game because of an injury. So Exactly. So right. 
with, with, with the fact that it looked like he would play in one of the non-conference games and he didn't, that leads me to believe, okay, he's clearly not going to play nine games. Like that, again, nothing's 100%. I hope he plays in all nine games. But we have to deal with the reality on the ground right now, which is it looks like he won't be available for all of them as he wasn't last year. So then you go through this schedule and you say, well, which game does he miss? Because if he misses the Cal game at home, that's a little, or the UCLA game or the Arizona State game, that's a little bit different than if he misses the USC game, the Oregon State game, the Oregon game, the Washington game, or the Arizona game, or the Colorado game at this point. Like, we'll, we'll see what the buffs end up being once they get into the gauntlet that is the Pac 12. But I, I, I just think that that is a major question for, for the Utes because, look, we know that they can win games with Bryson Barnes starting at quarterback. They've mm-hmm. done so twice on the road against Power 5 programs in the last couple of years. So we know they are good enough defensively to carry them on that side. But there's a ceiling there. Like Bryson Barnes would not be the starter if Cam Rising was healthy, but he is. He's not anymore. It's Nate Johnson now, to your point. Right. So it's just that sort of back and forth. I don't love that in a quarterback deep league. I don't love that in a league that's just generally as stacked as the Pac-12. So can they get through and be a 9-10 win team? going back and forth with these two quarterbacks, I don't know. I need Cam Rising to come back probably for them to get to 10 wins or else I could see an eight-win season. Mm -hmm. And the hard part is it's not even just, to your point, Cam Rising getting back. It's him getting back to the level that has allowed this Utah team to win back-to-back Pac-12 championships. And that's why, yes, I mentioned I had Utah beating UCLA. As of right now, I'd probably still have them losing to Oregon State. I just like the way that team plays defensively. I think DJU's done a very good job. I think that would be a close game. And as I mentioned, it's one I expect Cam Rising to be back for as well, but I don't think he'll be playing at his best. And I think in order to go into Corvallis and get a win, you need your top 10 quarterback playing at his best, which I believe Cam Rising I is. I do like the Utah defense against DJU, who, look, yep. he's he's appeared great so far against mm-hmm. San Jose State and UC Davis. He hasn't mm-hmm. been tested yet. Uh, He certainly looks better than he did at Clemson. I think we all expected that. I certainly did because he's not asked to do as much. It's different when you go up against a Utah defense, though, uh, coached by Kyle Whittingham and and, and Morgan Scalley. So I I think that that's still a game that, look, I need Cam Rising to play. Like, that's the only Mm -hmm. thing that would change my prediction for any games uh, in in Pac-12 play at this point in time. Like, my team, I mean, Colorado as well has completely shifted my expectations, of course. But everybody else right where I expected them to be. I, I don't think I have a miss yet on any of the other contenders mm-hmm. in terms of whether or not they'd go in and win. And I thought that regardless of, of Cam Rising's health, I said, no, I think Baylor's the, I had Utah in my Pac-12 prime picks as an eight-point road favorite because I was like, I don't think they're giving up more than 10, 13 points. Guess what? They didn't. They just didn't score enough. I just need I just need one more field goal out of them, and I could have had another four in one week. But regardless, we, we're still over 500 over there. So if you want to make some money, actually, stay away from the Pac-12 prime picks this week. I already I haven't even made my picks, JT, and I already hate them. Because, because the games are just going to be these huge, giant lines that are so hard to predict. It's going to be and, on Sports Center Bad Beats SVP. <laughs> that's kind of what it what it feels like. like all the games right now. I I don't um, I don't care for any of that. I don't even know if I what I want to do with Michigan State because now Mel Tucker's not going to be coaching. I know. Sometimes teams play inspired, and sometimes they play like crap. Yeah. It, 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 it's anyway. It's a mess. But um, a mess. I I think Utah with Cam Rising healthy and playing, yeah, that can be one of the best teams in the Pac-12. They can get to the Pac-12 title game. I could also see him, even with Cam Rising there, going 8-4 and because this league is so, so good. It is so good. And to finish up how I think the game-by-game things stuff are going to go, as I said, I right now would still predict the loss versus Oregon State. I just think it's going to be hard for this team to only suffer one loss in conference play just because of how tough the schedule is overall. I really believe if this Utah team had last year's schedule, I think they would have a better chance to be a Pac-12 team because then you're talking about you have to go to Oregon and win, and going to Florida this year is not as daunting of a task in game one it would have been. And also going to UCLA is not as daunting last year because there's no DTR and there's no Charbonnet. I still think the Bruins are a solid team, but with a true freshman starting at quarterback, quarterback against Kyle Whittingham defense. I like the Utah defense in that matchup, but getting back to this year's schedule, as I mentioned, a tough loss to Oregon state. I think they'll obviously beat Cal off the bye. I still think Utah is going to get USC. I just think they have their number. I think the level this Utah defense is playing at right now. And I think cam rising, especially has played some of his best games 
overall, honestly, you could even say his best games in general against the Trojans. And I think that continues. And I do think that Utah is able to beat USC in this matchup too. And uh, of course, after that, they have a pretty tough game when it follows it up with Oregon. And uh, it's going to be an incredible effort by the Utah defense if they are able to beat the Trojans in the Coliseum with the level that Caleb Williams is currently playing at at the moment. But we're going to talk about the second half of my schedule predictions in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our new friends at the Locked On College Network, Jace Medical. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is fill out a simple online form and in some cases jump on a quick call with one of our board-certified physicians. Get outgoing care from our physicians or on any treatment-related questions, doctors created and doctor recommended. You don't need to get caught up and be unprepared if there's a medical emergency. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. James handles everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy, medication, delivery and outgoing construction and care so make sure you guys get a plan down and get jace medical it's worked for me and if an invitation for jace medical you guys can head over and get in their great offer you can save more than 360 dollars by getting these life-saving antibiotics with jace medical plus an additional 20 dollars off by using my code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com that's j-a-s-e medical.com code locked on to get an additional $20 off. And once again, you can save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical. All right, Spencer, coming back in, looking at the second half of the Pac-12 schedule, I do still think Utah is going to beat Oregon at home too. I just believe this Utah team is very strong at home. It's kind of, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this. For some reason right now, and it's maybe just because of Oregon's close game with Texas Tech, I'm almost more concerned with the last game against Colorado than I am with Oregon right now, just because of kind of the allure going on with the buffs. But as I mentioned, I do expect Utah to still be able to gut out a tough win over Oregon. I think Cam Rising is going to get revenge for what I consider to be his worst game ever as a Utah quarterback when he threw three interceptions in Eugene last year. Utah will beat Arizona State. The Washington game is where I'll also still give them a loss. I just think that the Huskies are on a high level right now. I think that'll be a shootout. I, I, the Utah secondary has gotten beat deep potentially a couple times that the backup quarterbacks that like Sawyer Robertson and Graham Mertz has also missed a couple times on. And I think that could potentially be an issue for them against Washington. And I think Michael Penix is just, it's very hard to win on the road in college football. Once again, I think Michael Penix will have a big game there. So I do give Utah a loss there and I will have them beating in Arizona. I get your points you made about Tucson being tough. And I think it is, but I just think this Utah team coming off that loss against Washington will be motivated and in thrilling fashion. Now I used to think that Utah was going to win this game in pretty dominant fashion. I think it could come down to the wire, even with Colorado. I just think, Last game of the season for Coach Prime's team. Potentially, they'll probably get bowl eligible with the way they're trending right now. But, man, I, I expect that one to be just fireworks. I think it's going to be a great showdown between Shador Sanders, Cam Rising, and I think that'll come down to the why and I expect Utah to take it. So I'm with you. My schedule predictions don't really change overall. It's still 10-2. and two, But uh, what do you think about my re- rationale for those picks? All right, I, I think there's there's plenty of logic in there, and it's why we play the games. Because if, if I come on here and make a case for – why they could lose to Arizona. I, I don't think it sounds ridiculous. You might no, not I, agree, I but I'm losses. not out here trolling with that particular take. If I predict them as I am still to go into pending Cam Rising's health, Seattle and beat the Huskies, there's a world in which that happens because Utah, look, if they can just prevent the deep pass, I, I don't know that Washington's offense is going to have, like that is kind of the crux of Washington's offense is they they, they throw the ball down the field in a big, big way. And that's just a strength on strength. Utah defense, Washington offense. And I just lean Utah defense there. there there's no, like, it's just, it's honestly a coin flip sort of game. And, and there are a lot of those in the Pac-12. It's why the league is going to be so much fun. But I think those are tough road battles against Washington and Arizona. I think Utah is a very good football team. And, and I think they will get one. And I just think, look, there, there are upsets in the conference every year. If you picked Arizona every State year. to beat Washington last year, you would have been crazy. Guess what? You would have been right if you'd picked. Uh, there, there's another. There was another one that I was Arizona to beat UCLA last year. You would have been crazy. They were a 20 point underdog. Guess what? You would have been right. So, I, I, I think there are just elements that that go into it that I look at and say I can see the dots connecting, but I can see them connecting the other way. Like I'm not so dead set in 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 these uh particular opinions like i i do believe in them that's why i am stating them and why i think they're they're going to take place and i have my reasoning for such but i don't look at them and say i just can't see anything else happening okay it's not as if it's you know ohio state and michigan going through 
Like I can't see a world in which Michigan ends up nine and three in the regular season yeah. this year. I don't. I don't see that happening. Yeah. It's just not there. The schedule isn't tough enough. You got Penn State. You got Ohio. Like ten and two is the worst. They're gonna do probably eleven and one uh, uh, once again. So. I don't see that in the Pac-12. I think it's way more wide open. Um, and, 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 but like of the five contenders, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Utah, USC. Um, I, I, I just look at that. I get everybody. Yeah, Washington, Utah, USC, Oregon, Oregon State. Yeah. So uh, just making sure I had all the five that I thought were contenders coming into this year. I haven't wavered off of that stance at this point in time, pending Cam Rising's health, of course. You could give me any matchup of those five teams in the Pac-12 title game, and I'd believe you. And I could, I could readily make the argument for why that happens, but that's why we play the games on the field and not on paper because it's it's impossible to know 100% of the time what what is what is going to happen. And it's going to be so much fun to watch and see how it all plays out. I said before the year, I still think, even though I gave Utah two conference losses, they had that last year, still made the Pac-12 championship game. I think that's the tiebreakers, based on my prediction, You did over, get a little bit of a break from my Ducks. Oh, for sure, for sure. But this year, I think they'll be able to control their own destiny because I have them beating USC and Oregon, and I think it'll be Utah versus Washington, the Pac-12 championship game. I'll stick to that preseason prediction I have. And I'll have Utah three-peating as a Pac-12 champion still. Even I, But you're also right on the all the different scenarios we could see. I'd be shocked if Utah was undefeated in the regular season. That'd be the one thing that would really surprise me. But I could see them being a one-loss conference champion and potentially getting into the playoff. I think this team has the potential to get to that level. I could even see Utah suffering three to four losses in Pac-12 play. I don't think that's going to happen, but the Pac-12 is so good right now. You're telling me they lost to two to three of the ranked teams, and then if they also suffered a loss to one of the unranked teams or something like that, that being maybe in Arizona, I wouldn't be surprised on that either, but it's going to be interesting to play out. But of course, before we get to Utah and this fantastic Pac-12 slate of games, they do have Weber State this Saturday, September 16th. And Kyle Winningham mentioned that he thinks with the ever-changing future of college football, these FCS games could be in doubt. He mentioned that if we get to the point where we're in super conferences, he doesn't know if these FCS teams are going to be able to play Power 5 teams. And unfortunately, I think that'd be really bad for the sport. I think there's a lot of value in games like this against Weber State. And uh, one of those is just the awareness you get to raise for the FCF program when you're talking about the money it gives to the different schools as well as just in general them having a big game on national tv i think that's always something that's fun i also like to play in teams in states or just giving elevating those smaller brands as i mentioned for the schools like utah i think it's great that allows your red shirts and just your freshmen who are like playing on red shirt to get in the game late get experience there's nothing like game experience and just seeing live reps in a game so i think that's the best kind of film you can get on some of those underclassmen too and just wins in general are really hard to come by in this sport so i think it's all, it's nice too to kind of have one that is from especially a program like utah right a pretty surefire win in general too so it gets the fans all fired up lots of touchdowns a fun performance overall but i just think there's so much good these games do spencer i would really hate to see them go away i would as well uh they're really important financially for athletic departments it's the primary reason they exist uh programs at the fcs level do not have anywhere near the money that you have in the power five conferences because the television deals are just night and day like you, you just cannot emphasize that enough uh, i like the point you made about brand visibility for for smaller fcs schools as well I, I think that that's another added benefit for these programs and look it's not like an fcs program has never won because when they do what does that do for the program and, and giving that opportunity away i don't think is is worth it in college sports i think you should schedule and manage them better so they don't all get loaded like they are in week three Agreed. of the pac-12 slate this week like there are way too many games that are just going to be duds uh uh, the, this week. So I, I, I fully agree. Scheduling is broken in college football. You won't ever hear me argue that particular point. But I think these games should should stay for all the reasons that that, that I mentioned and that you've mentioned uh, as well. And, you know, they it, it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. Money goes to the FCS school. Power five school has a better chance to become bowl eligible. You can only count one. But guess what? You, you still get to count one. And then you can make that money back pretty easily there. Like, the, the game and there's no preseason in college football there's preseason in the nfl and that's yeah. kind of what it serves as an, an opportunity for young guys to play uh, as well so i i i would not want to be in a world where those go away because i think you can have a lot of a lot of negative ramifications that people aren't thinking about but you know that's the way the sport moves right now so yeah, well, I think there's I going to be a lot of long-term ne negative ramifications from how this summer has played out. But uh, that's a t discussion for a, a future date. But uh, the fun thing is we're living in the present right now. The Pac-12 is rolling. Utah's rolling. It's going to be fun to see the schedule get underway. Make sure you guys check out Locked On Pac-12. Spencer, maybe you'll be feeling better about those prime picks once you record that episode. Uh, we're going to see. We're, we're gonna, I'm 7-3 and three right now. I hope I can stay over 500 this week. That's all I'm saying.
Hey, that's a good goal. Spencer, thanks for joining us. Yep, anytime. Thanks, JT. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Utes. We'll be talking more about Utah's matchup with Weber State this coming Saturday on tomorrow's show. We'll see you then.